part of the reason why it's a couple different reasons or a few different reasons why um, I'm doing build a, I'm building a house, right? And I'm actually going through the process because I can go and I can just continue to buy turnkey properties, buy them cash, make sure that I'm um, reinvesting, continue to grow my assets, and then, you know, give you all the blueprint inside of the Patreon on how it is that you can utilize real estate in order to protect yourself from a financial tax burden that could be get, given to you by the president of the United States or, or um, you know, just continue to increase your net worth. It's not all about that. Being a bag chaser is not just about money. Being a bag chaser is about doing the thing that's in your best interest, understanding that the money comes along with it. And there's multiple different steps that comes along with success. The first step is uh, you got to get rid of the debt. The second step is you need to get out of survival mode. Out of survival mode is usually people that is one or two or three paychecks away from being financially in a disastrous situation. And even people that make over $100,000 a year, over 52% of people that make over $100,000 a year, millennials specifically, are one paycheck away from losing everything. And how do I know this? Not just from the statistics, but because I was a part of a homelessness project for over a year in which every Saturday I worked with homeless people. And so I, I seen what the face of homelessness looked like. It wasn't entirely based off of the guy that's holding a sign that's coming up off of a freeway. It was based off of real life people that were one paycheck away, one job loss away, one medical bill away, one situation ship away from losing everything, right? And so when I'm building this house and I'm learning and I'm working with contractors and things like that, I'm gaining insight and information on how I can then leverage that in order to impact other people, whether it be from an information perspective and giving it to the Patreon members or using it in my community. Now, I want to focus on that second part real quick using it in my community, right? The bag chasers are always going to get every single piece of information because I never talk about it until I do it. So I talk about business. I talk about corporate America. I talk about building businesses. I talk about being successful on social media and content creation. Uh, I talk about being successful in your marriage and relationships. And then how it all is encompassed with doing the thing that's best for you as far as you not having to skip steps and do it the wrong way, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and everybody uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. So all of my core pr principles are rooted in spirituality and, and, and Jesus and biblical principles and the word of God, right? You may not know it, but I'm teaching it to you and I'm Mr. Miyagi it to you without necessarily quoting a scripture every single time I say something. But I pray before I come on this podcast. I pray when I wake up in the morning and I pray over my family when I get home at night. The second part, let's take the bag chasers out of it, all right? So the second part is, how can I then affect my community? Four steps, get out of debt, survival mode, thriving, and then being philanthropic, philanthropy, right? Once you buy your time back, once you then be able to thrive, once you cross a certain threshold from rich to wealth, and uh, you, you figure out ways to be able to give back to your community. There's a lot of ways in pe which people do it. They do it from giving you the game. They do it for giving you information. They do it through coaching. They do it through inspiration. They do it through donations and philanthropy. But one thing that I've learned in, in rocking out with Charleston White, because he's been very heavily involved in philanthropic efforts, and he gives away over a third of everything that he makes, over a third of everything that he makes, he gives it back to the communities that he go and do shows and visit. That is a fact. A lot of people don't know about it. Uh, we did a recording yesterday, and I'm going to release that over to the Bag Chasers, the full uncensored interview. You guys are going to absolutely love that inside of the Patreon. That's not going to be available to anybody else because it was too much game. But he, give, he gave me so much information. And one thing that we always harp on is when you give to these organizations, 95% of all of the money that you give don't go to the people. It doesn't go to community efforts. It goes to the furniture. It goes to the salaries. It goes to facilities. It goes to paying things and running things and the whole nine yards. So when you give to these organizations, and I'm not telling you that you should or you shouldn't, I think that giving to any organization as meaningful to your heart is whatever it is that you should do. But the one thing that I found is that actually impacting people in a, a, direct and personable way is more effective. And so this building is also giving me knowledge and information to be able to give to you guys later. But also, more importantly, uh, it's allowing for me to, in the future, then pour into my community. So I've decided that um, I will be personally 
And it's one of the reasons why my office is still here. My business is still here in Detroit. I have not moved away. Um, I want to continue to be a pillar in my community. It was a guy that said um, Anton don't represent Detroit. He asked everybody. He's trying to get my attention. Uh, he said, tag Anton to this. He said, uh, Anton don't represent Detroit. I agree. I'm bigger than my city. I'm much bigger than anything that you can be. Just because you put a Detroit hat on, just because you was born and raised here, that doesn't mean that you've ever actually done anything for your community. Don't mean you ever hired anybody, you put any money, money in anybody else's pocket. I'm a reflection of what the black community should be nationwide. So, what I'm announcing is, for me personally, historic. What I will be doing is... Um, for a long time, one of the things that bothered me, because Detroit is doing really well, it's on the upswing, downtown is thriving, Midtown is awesome, Corktown is awesome, Mexican Town is phenomenal, uh, Sherwood Forest, uh, you know, the whole, the Quindercut, Jefferson, Grand River, a lot of these different places are th thriving, but there are still pockets and areas that I think that should be taken care of. And every single day that I come down to this office and every day that I ride home, the first thing I do is I go back through my neighborhood and I drive by my childhood home and it bothers me. And I want it to continue to bother me because I don't want to become so far removed from the things that, that I've grew up around that I don't continue to come back and support and build for my community, not just for y'all on here on the internet and the bag chasers. So what I'm deciding to do is leverage my own personal money and resources to uh, buy up land, personally tear down houses, and then rebuild the houses in the communities for people to be able to go and live in. So I will be continuing to document that process. I don't wanna make too many announcements, but if you get money in the city if you've become successful as a, as a result of it, don't run back away from the city. We know that, that black people in these communities and these, we know it's messed up. We know that people do things. We know that they want to hurt us. We know that they don't like us. It's a similar thing that I was telling y'all yesterday. It's going to be a group of people that don't necessarily care for you and they're going to talk shit about you, but you're not doing it just for them. You're doing it because you got a greater purpose on this earth. So, we're going to continue to rebuild the infrastructure. We're going to do our own version of what gentrification looks like and that we're going to go back into our communities. We're not going to beg the mayor. We're not going to beg city council. We're not going to beg organizations to help us. We're not going to go to Biden. We're not doing none of that. If you get money, if you a millionaire, if you a dude that's been getting bread and you busting down the bag and you ran off into some other communities, which I, I understand it, I agree with it. I had to raise my daughter in a certain community everywhere. Anyway, let's have a real competition. Not of who can buy the best cars, because I'm still going to drive my fresh cars. I'm still going to live my life. I'm still going to continue to run up the money. I'm still going to do the assets. Let's not have a competition on who um, can come up with the biggest money phone. Let's have a competition to see how much we can put into rebuilding our communities. I don't care if you just adopt a park and you pay for the resources in order to keep the grass cut and the trash picked up around it. Um, I don't care if you decide that you want to buy up the block and then rebuild the whole block and then make sure that everything looks good. Anything that you can contribute. And now I'm dedicating myself to my city personally. Right? My heart is in my community where I actually see the children playing. Right? I'm also on top of that. This is not just about making the community look better. This is also about rooting out the things that I don't like the most about the community. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to start a fund. And that fund will be essentially to incentivize people to snitch on the people that are doing the worst things in your community. If you see somebody selling drugs, I'm going to put a reward, probably somewhere between $1,000 and $5,000, depending on the severity of the crime. I'm putting a reward 
on anybody that commits crime or do things that make it unsafe for our children to be able to walk to school every day in these communities that we're adopting and we're going to transform in the Detroit area specifically, I'm going to put a number on it. I'm going to put a tag on it that if you can get somebody else arrested and you can snitch and it leads to the arrest and the conviction of the people that's doing the worst things in our community, I will personally send you a cash app of anywhere between one and five thousand dollars, depending on the severity of the crime. Not only are we gonna rebuild our community, but we gonna make it cool to be cool and not cool to be dumb anymore. Not only are we going to put our money where our mouth is, because for every Lamborghini that you buy, I think that you should put an equal amount or at least a third into your community if you really getting money like that. Now, this ain't for the weak. This ain't for the normal, everyday folk, right? If you just a person that's going to work every day and you're trying to get out of debt, you need to first be selfish before you be selfless. We cool with you coming out and picking up some trash and cutting the grass or whatever like that, but we need you to focus on getting better because we can't really use you until you get your own life together, right? This ain't for y'all. This is for everybody that's claiming to be a baller. And it ain't even got to be just in Detroit. This can be in your city and your hood nationwide. If you really getting money and you doing your thing and you actually believe in building up your community. See, I don't want to hear from these pro blackity blacks. I don't want to hear from them. I don't want to hear from everybody that's sitting from the comfort of their home, but they ain't never gave nobody a job. They ain't never actually helped their community. They ain't never gave to a specific cause. They ain't never ever went back to where it is that they came from. They ain't actually putting nobody on. They ain't actually giving nobody an opportunity. And the only thing that they're doing is talking shit. I want to hear from that. I want to hear from the people that's actually willing to put their money where their mouth is because we don't want to hear shit about you unless you actually put the money up. I want to hear from the people that's actually proclaiming themselves to be rich or bad or getting to the bag because there's a lot of people that ain't a part of the bag chasers that's acting like they got it. Okay, well, let's play big bank, take little bank to see how many houses you can get torn down and then rebuilt as a result of it. Let me see how many parks you can adopt. I don't want to just see the Lambo. I want to see that reinvested back into your community. I want to see how many how many places can you make safe for your children to be able to walk down the street for people that don't even give a fuck about you. Anybody can talk about it. Very few people actually do it. Anybody can talk about it. Very few people actually do it. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up the fun. We're going to continue to do what we do. We're going to do it more effectively than anybody else. We're going to regentrify these neighborhoods and make them safe. Um, and then hopefully, hopefully we can continue to pay it forward and inspire somebody else to not just look inwardly, but outward on how it is that they can affect and actually help somebody instead of talking shit online every day. Cause we don't want to hear nothing that you are talking about no more. We want to see the results. So, um, just wanted to announce that and make sure that I hold y'all down because, um, we got a purpose on this earth. And if you're not leaving this earth in a better space had you not been here and the only thing you're doing is just talking, 